Hey there, it's Larry again. Just thought I'd give another uh, walk around showing some other aspects of this uh, aquaponic heating system. Um, I'm in, on the other side right now where the, the bucket is, where the oil is stored. And if you look down in there, that is nothing more than um, waste vegetable oil from a restaurant that's been uh, strained so there's no solid particles in there. Uh, occasionally, you have to mix that about you know one third with kerosene or diesel fuel. The only difference between kerosene and diesel fuel, diesel fuel still has sulfur in it. Um, I'm not sitting here sniffing my exhaust anyway, so it doesn't matter if I use kerosene or diesel. But as we come out of that bucket down there, you'll see there's a copper line and a little needle valve. It's only open about a quarter turn and a solenoid valve with a fan on it. I had to put a fan on that thing because that sucker gets 140 degrees if you don't and that will make your eyes light up and say tilt if you uh, grab that. Underneath the oil bucket you can see I have an electric heating pad and that's just in the event that it's really cold and that oil starts to you know thicken up it keeps the bucket warm and the oil flowing. Let's see, as we come out of that solenoid valve, there's a clear plastic tubing and it follows all the way up my drain line off my uh, IBC tank where my fish are at right now. And it curls around, feeds into the front of the stove. A little bit better view. As you can see, that, that oil's clear. I mean, it it's, uh, looks a little dark in the bucket, but it's it's actually fairly clear. Mm. That noise right there, that is actually my thermostat turning my fan, my cooling fan up here on the chimney, turning that on and turning the oil and pellets off at the same time. Um, let me go back around here. I'm going to give you a quick view outside. Just like I said, it's a very messy garage right now. Uh, <laughs> trying to work around the stuff in here and get it converted to a greenhouse. I have a few obstacles left in front of me until I get the shed over here to store that stuff in. We're going to look at the chimney. If we can... It's really kind of hard to tell. There's nice dog. Um, there's nothing but heat waves coming out of that chimney. There's a little bit of smoke, very, very little, because the majority of it actually gets burned inside of the stove. The stove actually gets that hot that the smoke is is burned before it gets out the chimney. You'd think that's probably not possible because the you know like I said I'm monitoring my temperature up here and making sure that uh, it never gets over 205 degrees Fahrenheit or you know, 207 something like that it, it's 100 degrees Celsius but we'll go down here underneath and we're gonna let's see if we can get a picture up inside of the stove this poor little uh, Motorola Droid does not focus very well. But as you can see, we got a wicked fire in there. And that's nothing more than... Uh, good grief, that's noisy. Nothing more than waste vegetable oil and wood pellets. Uh, let me get our temperature for our thermometer here and see where we're at now. about 405, 406 on the front and like I said it's always 100 degrees hotter at the back uh, so it's about 500 degrees back there right now and our heat exchanger about 120 and the stove's been running close to maybe an hour now, hour and a half maybe, something like that. 
And like I said, the object here is to get this 55 gallon barrel, the water and antifreeze in there up to 140 degrees. That pumps through all of this at about one gallon per minute. You know, so you could say a ball, you know, ballpark figure is it takes an hour to pump all of that, uh, the entire contents of that barrel through the heating system. And if that hopper was completely full, it would run about 12 hours, somewhere in that neck of the woods. And if that barrel is at 140 degrees, all that temperature is going to be transferred over into this IBC tank. Let's see if I can look in here about where my temperature is now. A little goldfish. I shouldn't say little, those suckers are huge now. And that's come up, well, almost uh, 8 degrees, something like that. It was about 62 when I started earlier today because I didn't have the waterbed heater uh, plugged in. I mean, heck, it's, we're almost halfway through the month of May right now, so that's why I didn't have it plugged in. I would, I would uh, just post another video here shortly showing uh, how much it, it actually heats the water in a very short period of time. And we'll watch this for a second. I'm sorry about the shakiness. I have a, a little uh, health problem that causes uh, nerve, nervous tremors. And, as you can see, that temperature is just rising. It, and once that thing hits 100 degrees, that little fan there will turn on, and the uh, pellets and oil will shut off. forgot to mention these switches up here. This one on the right is the blower, and this one is the actual master fuel on and off. So... And there it just kicked on. And that fan will cool that down to 95 degrees Celsius in record time. There it is. And the fuel just turned back on. So that constant turning on and off is the reason why this is actually able to run so long, you know, with very little fuel. Um, as I posted in the description of the previous video, I couldn't even buy anything that worked this efficiently. Like I said, I spent about 500 bucks building this, you know, and that's with the barrel stove, chimney, everything. You know, about $500 building this. And I looked all over online for some type of a, a biomass stove, you know, that would burn oil, pellets. I even have stuff over here that I get from my cousin. Uh, this is waste product from a uh, local bean elevator, and it burns just as well as pellets. Uh, problem with it is beans have oil in them, so there is a little bit of ash buildup that I have to clean out of there every day if I use that. But, like I said, this thing will burn about anything. Waste vegetable oil, waste motor oil. I found that automatic transmission fluid or hydraulic oil, man, that stuff burns really good. Uh, don't have soot problems, especially when you're using vegetable oil. Uh, the ash that comes, you know, from the wood pellets in there, every time the fuel turns back on, the oil rushes in there, creates a gust, and it just blasts any ashes out of that burn pot. So I have very little cleanup that I have to do on this. Um, I might have cleaned ashes out of this thing two weeks ago. And there's still hardly any sitting in the bottom of it. I said, couldn't buy one for the for what I spent to build this one. And even if I would have spent ten times the amount, uh, there's just nothing out there. So it's Nebraska Ren Redneck Engineering at its finest. But it actually works. You know, I can heat my fish tank and the greenhouse for next to nothing. The actual electric pull out of the wall for this thing is 
82.6 watts. I mean, that's less than most light bulbs. Uh, so, yep. That's about all I have for now. Like I said, I'll post another video when I get, get the thing all sealed up and tidied up. Uh, until then, talk to you later. Bye.